So what are we going to do? I mean, these vector fields seem pretty complicated, and they can be complicated. But if we go slowly, we can build up some intuition, and it won't be so bad. Let's consider some planar vector fields and how they might be described. Consider a general vector field in the xy plane given by fxi plus fyj. fx and fy are functions of x and y. Now, to draw a picture of such a vector field, try evaluating it at various points. Set up a coordinate frame, pick a point, that point is going to have some x and y coordinate, and draw the vector in there. Now, when you're doing this, there are lots of points to draw. You probably want to pay attention to what is happening along the x or y axes, because this is, this is very nice. One of those coordinates is equal to 0. It tends to be really easy to evaluate points there. Another thing to look out for when trying to draw a picture of a vector field is, are there any places where the vector field vanishes? where both the x and y components of the vector is zero. Those tend to be really important locations to understanding what the vector field as a whole is doing. Now, you're going to have to plot a lot of points, but with a little bit of practice, you can sort of see the flow of that vector field. How are things being moved around? Now, plotting a couple points is one thing, but really, you got to remember, a vector field is a field. You have a vector at every single point in space, and the more you put in, the more you will see. Consider the vector field in the plane given by minus yi plus xj. This is rightly described as a rotational vector field. Think about it. At the origin, it vanishes along the positive x-axis. The vertical component of the vector field is scaled by x. The horizontal component of the vector field vanishes along that x-axis. Along the y-axis, things are reversed. You are pointed in a direction that is purely in the negative i component, scaled by the magnitude of y, how far you are along that y-axis. OK, here's a different example. This one's called a saddle. This is given by xi minus yj. Notice the, the difference in how the vector field uh, is structured. You still have a vanishing point, an equilibrium at the origin. But now, along the x-axis, you are pointed purely in the horizontal direction. You are pointed out, away from the origin in contrast to what happens along the y-axis, where you have purely vertical components to that vector field, but you are pointed in towards the origin. And this is called a saddle precisely because you have these, these two different behaviors. You're moving in along the one direction. You're moving out along the other direction. And what happens everywhere else? Well, that's worth contemplating. What happens when you have a vector field that is not on the plane, but is in general n-dimensional space? That can be a little challenging to see. Here's one simple example. Let's say that you have the vector field that's given by the sum as i goes from 1 to n of xi ei, where ei are the standard basis vectors. Then how do we describe that? Well, consider what happens when you're looking at the length of these vectors. You need to take the square root of the dot product of the vector field with itself. What is that going to be? Well, that dot product is going to be the sum, as i goes from 1 to n, of xi squared so that you have something that is getting longer and longer and longer as you move out away from the origin. Now, it's at this point that spherical coordinates are going to be helpful. General spherical coordinates, where that sum of the xi squareds is precisely the square of the spherical radial coordinate, rho. Do you remember that guy from volume 3? So this vector field has length given by rho, and what is the direction? Well, the direction is exactly pointed out straight away from the origin. This is a radial vector field that is often called a source and is very compactly described in terms of spherical coordinates.